Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. So I guess I'll, I'll start with when, when I first started working in transport, what kind of uh, spurred that on or, or started the whole thing was the industry, um, there was controversy about changing of the regulations. CFIA was uh, looking at changing the transport regulations for beef cattle. And um, at that time, the, the transport regulations were 30 years old. They wanted to make sure they were in line with the OIE regulations and, and looking at what that meant. And, for the most part, they wanted to look at transport durations and feed water and rest intervals because um, those are the more, more contentious things, I think. Um, and when they went to change or wanting to change those regulations, the industry said, you know, no, we need to stop and, and make sure that you know, there's no science, that where's the science base from which we change these regulations from or to? And so, um, at that time, they, I, I started to work with the industry and they said, you know, the best thing we can do is to make a, um, to start with a benchmarking study. So, you know, we, we wanted to do a bit more detailed research study right from the get-go, but we decided to step back and to say, okay, we need to know, just to get a snapshot of the industry, what's happening? What, where are, you know, what are the transport durations? Um, you know, what are the conditions under which that transport occurs? Obviously in Canada we have very extreme weather conditions. You know, just to kind of get a, um, a baseline of what Canadian transport uh, for beef cattle looks like. So that's in fact what we did. We started with the benchmark study. We had a very engaged uh, group of people and we ended up collecting, we, we sent out some 10,000 surveys, which is a very large survey base, and we ended up getting back over 7,000. Really, where's the science to show that the current loading densities that the industry is using are bad or, or good for cattle in terms of welfare? So if you actually look, there's no study done in North America that actually um, compares or looks at the actual effects of loading density on animal welfare. So it was a good place to start with our survey. Um, we, we wanted to see, based on the loading densities of those cattle in the survey, what kind of welfare outcomes were they related to. So the biggest finding, I would say, that above 20, 24 to 26 hours in transport is the time that um, those animals, beyond which we see welfare issues occur. So if I had to draw a line or if somebody asked me where you should have that cutoff in terms of, you know, a maximum time in transport, I would say about that 20 to 24 hour mark, which is surprisingly uh, very close to what the Europeans are saying. So um, in terms of being aligned with, again, the Europeans and the OIE, that fits quite well and that fits with what our research is showing. Um, we do have, uh, there's more shrink loss that occurs above that period of time. Um, there's more mortality and morbidity that occurs, particularly in culls and in the calves as well. So again, that cutoff is, I think, is important and we, sh we need to do more work around that. We have some funding currently from ALMA looking at um, use loading density and a little bit on ventilation and, and conditions within the trailer and how that affects uh, morbidity in those feedlot calves when they come in. So that's ongoing right now and to be finished in 2014, I believe. So. Well, CLT is the Canadian Livestock Transporter course that was developed by all sectors of the cattle industry. Uh, dairy people wrote about dairy cattle, uh, beef about beef, and all, all of the uh, entities of uh, cattle transport were involved, like uh, feedlots, the packers. Everyone had a part in uh, creating a training program for training truck drivers to haul livestock. Well, CLT, uh, when you've taken the course, you now have the resources to back you up. It's not just what you think. 
Uh, new drivers, it's a very good tool for teaching new drivers all of the aspects of the trucking, whether it's uh, loading, unloading, or um, what happens at the packers, or what happens to the cattle before you haul them, emergency situations where uh, things that don't normally happen, like uh, an emergency situation that you may never come across, but having that knowledge and you know at, at a time when you need it is, is very important. Like it gives you references on regulations, gives you references on um, um, compromised animals. You can actually open up a book and, and look at a compromised animal and say, okay, this is what it looks like. Can you haul it or can you not haul it? And you have a better idea of what you can do and what you can't do as a trucker. You know, if an animal needs to be euthanized, you, you have a pretty good idea of what can be done and what can't be done with that animal. So doing research and, and understanding what's happening in terms of welfare around transport research and beef cattle is important for several reasons. The first is that the industry has their due diligence to the public and uh, to their consumers to show that they're you know, paying attention to, to what's happening on, with their animals and that the welfare is, is an important part of their business. The second is that Obviously, it's an economic benefit for producers if they understand where issues occur in that production chain, including transport, if it means increased shrink for them, if it in means increased mortality and morbidity in their animals, if it means higher carcass bruising once they get to the packing plant, and discounts associated with that. Those are economic um, points that you know the producers need to understand and need to make corrections where they need to or not if they don't. So we need to know where those things are. And, and lastly, um, in terms of regulatory issues, um, we need to have the science base to understand where those regulations should sit rather than just you know, making assessments on hearsay or uh, feelings or emotional issues. We need to have the science base to understand what those are.